All right, hey everyone, this is Ash. Welcome back to The King's Speech. Uh, so, as per usual, I'm going to dive into my weekly Shonen Jump reaction and reviews. Uh, no big introduction or uh, notes this time uh, before we dive in. Uh, I'm going to try to, this week at least, get back to doing some of my read-through videos because I know it's been quite a while since I put out one last. And uh, feel this last little while felt like my uh, mental health has been a little bit better. And I'm in a better place right now. Uh, so I'm going to try to slowly ease back into that as well. Uh, but apart from that, before we dive in, I just want to make a quick note uh, that I'm not going to do any more reaction reviews for uh, Promised Neverland going forward anymore. Uh, I'm probably only going to stick to really doing... Shonen Jump reaction reviews for One Piece and Haikyuu going forward because I want to kind of shift my energy more towards uh, doing the read-throughs and a lot of the other Shonen Jump series I haven't really been uh, feeling a lot lately so I'm going to try to kind of divest myself of that and move into uh, some more enjoyable stuff instead. But uh, with that said, without further ado, let's dive into One Piece Chapter 963, Becoming Samurai. And we see the continuation of Gang Badge's Oh My Family with Volume 13, The Germ Pirates Attack, Countries Without a King. So you see, you know, this eclectic group of uh, scrubs that are probably going to get killed uh, by Beige and his crew. I could not particularly care less about that. So we pick up where we left off last time with flashback going long, long ago. Hundreds of years in the past, we minks and the samurai of the Kozuki clan of Wano made an unbreakable pact. We swore to be brothers. If anything should happen to either side, the other will rush to their aid to fight. Though we do not know when this might happen, we shall be ready. And you see adorable little dog storm and cat viper uh, in the whale tree with what looks like the former musketeers that are looking at the poneglyph and the Kozuki clan symbol. And so both of them are just getting super excited going, Wano? A foreign country? I'd love to see that. And you see... <laughs> It's almost like a comic strip panel. You see them going out to sea on the little sailboat. Going, hey, where are all the islands? I heard there were a bunch. Like, you bet there are more than five islands in the world. <laughs> oh, they're so adorable. It's like, that many? I'm so hungry. And you see an ah and a sploosh as a giant wave overturns their boat. And you see Cat Viper is all just beaten up and bruised going, No! Wano's not a land of dreams, it's a nightmare! And you see, uh, what's his face? You see Dogstorm, Cat Viper, and uh, Kawamatsu have all been tied up to a pole uh, by a bunch of thugs from Wano, looks like. And Kawamatsu's like, Ah, it's like, I'm not with them, I'm a kappa! And he's like, So you're a monster! And Inu's like, Damn it, we should have never gone to sea! And Neko's just bawling his eyes out going, I wish I hadn't come here. This isn't how you treat brothers. And then you have them going, what do we have here? A monster dog, monster cat, and a river imp. Is this beach under a curse? Let's burn them at the stake. And then you see off to the side, Oden has gone for a swim and he's gone and beat up one of the carps that brings you up the waterfall. And he's hauling it back to shore. And he's just watching this little, you know, witch hunt going on. With an eye, he's like, burn him! It's like, there we go. And you have Odin going, now I've got enough fish for my pot of Odin. And he's like, hmm? And you see just the three of them crying. And the little thugs just laughing with a, yeah, ha, ha. And Odin goes and beats them all up. And he goes, you should be ashamed of yourselves. You only fear what is different out of ignorance. It's absolutely pathetic for you to torment little children. And with a casual backhanded wave, he's like, so long, as he takes off. And then Inu and all of them, you know, do the whole gag of, don't leave us here. 
And then we have Kuri Castle Kuri. It's like, what? What's with these monsters, Odin? And he's like, they followed me here. And you see Mink Dogstorm and Mink Cat Viper. He goes, thank you for saving us in our time of need. He's like, ha, ha, it's hot. And they're all just, you know, enjoying a feast of Odin. And Cat Viper's like, it's so hot. We were already going to die from hunger and being shipwrecked. And then we were going to die from violence. It's like, meow. It's like, hey, this is too hot. I can't eat it. And you have Kinemon being like, I just can't get used to this. Talking animals? And uh, Odan goes, they're called minks. My father told me about them years ago. And then you see, you know, the Kozuki clan symbol on the background. And they're going, yes, I bet we have that symbol in our land too. We and Yugar are like brothers. Like, you've saved our lives. I'm so hungry. And you see Cat Viper going, but the problem is, it's too hot for me to eat. And he just flips the Odin pot, overturns it. And people go, don't do that, Cat Viper. Because the cats have very sensitive tongues. And Odin's like, wah, ha, ha, ha. Listen up, Cat. Odin is meant to boil. And you see Kawamatsu just doing his best, you know, Yuma from World Trigger impression. Doing his little uwu face as he's eating the, uh, the spilled oil from the ground. And he's like, I think it's good. And like, and what's with you? And so Kawamatsu goes, the boat carrying mother and me sank and we washed upon this land when we sought help. They threw rocks and called us fishmen. But mother was injured and we couldn't get back home. When mother was dying, she told me that fishmen are oppressed all over the world. <sighs> so I should claim that I am a kappa. I'm Kawamatsu the kappa and I've been living off scraps and leftovers. And then you see him bowing to Odin going, First you saved my life, then you gave me this delicious food to eat. Thank you, sir. I will never forget what you've done for me. You have Cat Viper going, Oops, I failed to express my gratitude right. I was waiting, I was wasting food. And Inu's like, it was mature of you to notice. So Cat Viper goes and bows and starts eating the food off the floor. And he goes, sorry about that. I'll join you, Kappa. And he goes, bow, it's still too hot. And he's like, yeah, ha, 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 this cat is funny. And he's a cat? And you see Oden going, there must be many more, even stranger animals out there in the world. After meeting you, I'm looking forward to going out to sea more than ever before. Be well, you three. And then you see them just pouncing on Odin going, let us stay here. And he's like, Qua, he's like, were you even listening to us? We don't have anywhere else to go. And then you see them all tromping around and playing with the others. You see, you see Raizo, you know, doing his little ninja tricks for Inu and Kawamatsu. <laughs> and you see adorable, adorable baby Kiku just doing a little uh, cat teaser for Neko who's just like pawing at it. That's super adorable and baby Okiku is just like continues to be super absolutely adorable. And you see and now there are more. I guess it's just in your nature to attract others. But more importantly you've got a money problem. And you see Denjiro going, you let Orochi your money again, didn't you? Why would you help him? Rodan goes, he might be on his own now, but he was still one of Yasue's men. I can't just abandon him. So it looks like Yasue got wise to Orochi stealing his money and kicked him out of his service. And you see sneaking, slinking, skulking. These are the fundamentals. Here we go. Who cares about Yasue? And you see Kinemon, Raizo, and... Uh, Kim on Raizo and uh, Conjuro, you know, doing the little thieves mask because they're getting ready to rob uh, Yasue, all of what we saw in the flashback. And we'd see in Hakumai, why did you try to steal all of this money? And like, because Odin is hard up for gold. If you're going to kill us, Hedgehog, then get it over with. And Yasue's like, oh, Odin, where do you find these people? And he goes, you can have all of the money you tried to steal. And they're like, what? He's like, Lord Yasue, these are Hakumai's funds. He goes, and he's like, here, take this as well. Use it. And they're like, more money? What kind of trap are you setting? And Yasue goes, do you love Oden? Then use these coins to clean yourself up. 
you see the next page is just a spread of all of them having gone, you know, gotten proper kimonos and robes. And they're dressed up all nicely with the swords at their sides. He's like, ah, ha, ha, you look all wrong. And you see practice manners. <laughs> no matter what else, this chapter has made it just for having baby Okiku just be super freaking adorable. Like, she outshines both Cat Viper and Inu in adorableness. And it's not even a contest. And see Kinemon teaching her how to speak. And she goes, this one. And he's like, no, not like that. You got to say it from your gut. And you see Kanjiro going out and buying some books. And Kinemon studying over them. And you see Denjiro teaching uh, all the little kids how to read. And he goes, if you has ruffians like you for vassals, Odin will only embarrass himself. And you see them going, Prithee, I doth wish a most pleasanteth day to thee, Lord Oden. I declare this tofu for her to be simply exquisite. Oden's like, what's gotten into people lately? You're creeping me out. And you have Yasue going, one day he will be Shogun of Wano. Those who serve and support him must be the greatest samurai in the land. Not only must you protect your liege, you will do the same for the capital. And eventually all of Wano... And eventually all of Wano, you will be our guardian deities. And you see just more montages of them learning how to sword fight and learning how to read and write. And you see three years later, 30 years before the present, Flower Capital, I hear the daimyo of Kuri will be bringing a procession to the capital. Wah ha ha, make sure nothing gets stolen. Lord Oden's vassals are all common thugs after all. He's like, ah, it's the mountain and the molehill. Wait here, Yama. And you see Snork, Snork. He's like, into the basket, Koyama. <sighs> and you see that the giant boar that was terrorizing at the beginning, even though it got completely bisected by Odin, has somehow been stitched back together. And is now apparently his pet or something. <sighs> Boy, all right. And you see, look, the group from Kuri has arrived. He's like, what the? And you see, Kinemon has apparently given up his bad boy looks as he's now gotten his shock of black hair back. And you see, oh my, look at those samurai. Were Lord Odin's vassals always so gallant? It's like, I almost didn't recognize them. It's practically a shogun's procession. And you see them marching their way to the capital, you know, with Odin riding on the smaller boar. And you have the heroic sight of these war bold warriors, proud and tall, was stunning enough to make the crowd forget to breathe. It was said that the weight of their arrival upon the gathering watchers was so great that it caused the capital itself, God sakes, caused the capital itself to sink just a little bit. And you see, yo, father, it's like, Odin, you've become a great man, my son. We're all stunned at the turn. <laughs> oh, man, Odin's just breaking the fourth wall here. We're all stunned at the turnaround. And Odin's like, I've only been made great. I haven't changed a bit. And you see, uh, what's his face? Why can't I remember his father? Sukiyaki going, my Oden thanking others? And he goes, you don't have to be frightened. And then you see in the background that uh, Orochi's found himself in service to the Kozuki clan now. And you have Oden visit the capital hearing his father was ill, but seeing Sukiyaki invigorated was a relief. However, this would be the last day they ever exchanged words. <laughs> yes, finally. Later that year, Itachi Port Kuri. You see the Moby Dick <laughs> on the shores of Wano just overturned. The sails are completely tattered. Like, we went up the falls, right? Why is there sea and land all the way up here? Seems like people live here. It's going to take a few weeks for repairs, Pops. The cargo's all ruined from taking on water. We'll need to procure supplies. Who wants to go? Just about everyone. We need to stretch out again. 
<laughs> and you see Captain of the Whitebeard Pirates, Edward Newgate, with his long flowing locks in the prime of his life. <laughs> God, Marco looks so dumb as a kid. Oh, wow. All right. <laughs> he looks so ridiculous. <laughs> and you have Marco just be like, I'll go too. He's like, not you. You're still a deckhand. Oh, boy. All right, Oda. What the fuck is Whitey Bay wearing? Good Lord. Oh, God. Does Oda rip? Remember that pants exist and that women wear pants. God. I love Whitey Bay. She's one of my favorite Whitebeard allies, captains. But that is the most ridiculous looking outfit I've ever seen. And just, oh, Oda, Oda, Oda. Just cannot help himself. You have Lord Odin went to the coast. Why did you let him go? Stop him at once. And you hear all the samurai, all, all the uh, Wano residents go, Did you hear? A pirate ship in Itachi port. And different from the usual. This one's big. It looks mighty, they say. And you see Kinemon and Conjurer just running away through the streets going, That's not good. I assume he went to drive him off. And Conjurer like, Let's hope that's what he's doing. And you see Whitebeard noticing off to the side, someone's coming, and he goes, Wait. Stand back, all of you. Something's coming. And it's like something dangerous. And you see a dum 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 dum. As Odin comes running up, going, There, that must be the pirate ship. Well done. You made it past foul weather and raging falls. I've been waiting for you. And he pulls out his swords. And Whitebeard goes, This isn't good, as he leans back with his bezento, ready to strike. And then he and Odin clash in a. In a uh, in a, in a clash together and have black lightning coming out as their conqueror hockey clashes. And you see a giant kaboom with the ha-ha. And they're like, ah! And he goes, my name is Kozuki Oden. I do not know who you are, but I ask you, let me ride on your ship. And you have Whitebeard just having his what-the-fuck face, just thinking of what the hell is wrong with this guy. And chapter end. Oh, all right, so, um, quick thoughts. So far, this has been the most enjoyable flashback chapter. Uh, but I want to stipulate that that doesn't mean it was good. Should probably put that disclaimer up I contrary to popular belief I don't go into every One Piece chapter you know kind of expecting to dislike it and hate it and just you know be uh, overly critical of it but going through this one it's, it just becomes more and more evident to me where Oda is lacking in in terms of storytelling, uh, especially post time skip. And I think I talked about this in my last video where, you know, his whole idea of saying that he expects One Piece to end in five years, you know, blah, 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 all the estimates. And I talked about how, you know, his pacing issues might be suffering because of that. And this chapter was honestly more of the same. But the thing I think I want to talk about most related to it is I've seen a lot of fans uh, talk about how Wano has this, you know, overarching theme of comparing, you know, Oden as a leader uh, with uh, Luffy as a leader. You know, kind of comparing and contrasting how they're similar. Now you have Oden and his scabbards and his nine scabbards and you have Luffy and the nine straw hats, you know, and drawing together all the parallels and how people are saying, you know, Luffy's eventually going to become a leader like Oden 
and you're, we're saying that Wano is an arc where we're seeing, you know, the what if scenario, what if the Straw Hats had lost uh, Luffy, say at Marineford, or something else had happened to him, you know, how would they cope uh, with a scenario like that? And while I can see the parallels and I can see, you know, why people are contrasting and drawing that, I can't say that Oda's doing a good job of really contra because let me let me try to start from somewhere else before I continue this. The idea that pinged to me as I was reading this chapter, kind of just thinking about the past chapters, is it feels like Oda is almost memeing Oden to be like, you know, Oden is, you know, from those uh, Dos Equis beer commercials, like, Oden is the most interesting man in the world. You know, and he's trying to be like, oh yeah, you know, look at him. He goes and does this, you know, when he left the capital, the steps of everyone that wanted to follow him made it tilt to the side a little bit, etc., etc. But he's the last few chapters, all he's really done is tell us how great Odin is, you know, and how lovable he is, and how awesome he is, and all that. And he seems to think that the character has a natural charisma that's just going to make the readers just fall in love with him, you know, and be enticed by him and want to see uh, where his story is going. And in that regard, I can see, you know, why the comparisons to Luffy are there. Because a lot of Luffy's, you know, Mihawk point to this out back in Rainford, is that one of Luffy's greatest strengths is that he is charismatic and likable. You know, and there's a reason he's the protagonist of this series. But that didn't happen just over, you know, the span of three chapters where everyone's like, okay, I already immediately love... Luffy and it feels like Oda's trying to cheat and you know trying to skip the shortcuts with Oden and have him achieve that same level by just telling us you know how charismatic and awesome he is rather than showing us why he's charismatic and charming and everything else and I think that's one of the biggest reasons that like some of the pivotal moments of this chapter just really fall flat for me is that uh, the scabbards don't really have an identity outside their connection to Oden as a character and that really really hurts a lot of the emotional impact of this flashback and the connection to Oden because um, the kind of the other connection like the other parallel draw to the straw hats is the Straw Hats, you know, yes, they're all part of Luffy's crew, you know. They're going to help him support his dream, etc., etc. But they had lives and they had an individuality that has that had nothing to do with him before he came into their lives. And I can't really say that for Odette and the Scabbards, where it feels like we don't really know anything about them pre Odin. Even seeing, you know, uh, Okiko and Izo and being like in the little backdrop of, oh, you know, they're orphan children that were part of a famous dancing school. That's a cool tidbit, but it really isn't enough information for us to kind of draw more conclusions about that, you know, how kind of shaped and forged them into the people that they are today. And the same goes for, you know, Raizo and Kingdom One and the others and all of them. Like, Oda's just skimming over, you know, the fact that they just joined Oda and just decided, hey, we love this guy for reasons, but not really showing us or giving us the reason why they love him so much. And then having them go around, you know, being like stealing money from Yasue and having them sell them, you know, if you love Oden, you need to, you know, make yourselves vassals worthy of being, you know by his side it falls flat when he hasn't done enough to actually flesh out Wano or Oden and make them feel 
like distinct characters rather than just you know plot devices and I wish I could say that you know he's trying to rush it through because that's like as we see at the end of this chapter he wants to get to you know the exciting stuff he wants to get to his adventures with Whitebeard and Roger because maybe that forms the crux of the person he eventually became before Kaido took over but I don't feel like that's the case. It feels like Oda thinks, you know, all of this has been enough to kind of characterize Odin well enough to actually make us care about him. And I can't really say I buy into that. But, yeah, I mean, I'll have to see how the rest of this flashback goes. Because I know a lot of people will say that, you know, we can't judge... Uh, you can't judge One Piece before you kind of get the whole picture uh, because that'll make everything kind of flow smoother. But I really wish Oda had used this flashback to really give Wano some depth. You know, like the easiest thing he could have done. I'm not sure if I mentioned this in my last video, if I really mentioned this on Twitter. But the easiest thing he could have done was show Oden, you know, traveling to uh, different districts and areas in Wano. And then through those areas, meeting his retainers. Because that would have been the simplest way for us to see, you know, the different cultures of Wano, you know, okay, different cultural norms and everything of Wano, you know, what the people are there are like. It would have shown us why Oden loves his country so much, you know, and why he would make a good ruler. And it would have given the scabbard some much needed characterization because you could also see their connection to uh, the land itself, which is kind of, I uh, want to talk about that with the point related to uh, what Yasue told him, where he said, you know, you have to be the guardian deities of Wano. But their connection to Wano itself is so divorced from everything else. So we don't really know why they care about the Islanders, people apart from Oden, you know, wanting Wano to be like this. And we don't know why Oden wants Wano to be like that either. But I'm kind of rambling, but uh, hopefully, hopefully that kind of at least partially explains my thoughts and kind of like my disgruntlement with how this flashback has been turning out so far. Uh, I think I, I did mention this last on my last video, but December 8th we'll be doing a stream uh, talking about Wano thus far and kind of the thoughts on everything we've seen. Uh, so hopefully I'm a little bit more articulate then. And uh, we'll probably get some diverse opinions in on that stream uh, about uh, what other fans feel like Wano's like. But yeah, apart from that, I think I'll cut it off there. Uh, this video should be uploaded hopefully by Monday night because I think it's getting a little bit late here. It's probably Monday night before this comes out. Uh, look for Q to come out around the same time. And then if there's any read-through videos uh, I'll be releasing this week, I'll also try to get that out sometime uh, tomorrow later in the week. Or I'll try to post an update on Twitter letting you know if that's going to be happening this week or not. But until next time, this is Ash. I'll talk to you all later.